who's out. Dwayne Corona, but I still got some signs I can show ya. No class, no school. That's cool. Throw the class on the YouTube. Even if they shut the school down, I'll get that knowledge anyway, somehow. Real scholars won't stop for Corona. Tune in for that science takeover. Happy Friday, everybody. Welcome to Mrs. Finney's science class. Shout out as always to the HB Warriors, to all of our subscribers, and to all of our visitors from my house to your house. Let's learn science. Today, we are still in lesson 11, but now we're in section two. Title for section two is Neutral, Harmful, and Beneficial Mutation. So the learned objective for today says, I can explain three possible ways a mutation can affect organisms. Three possible ways, all right? So the essential question, how do mutations affect real life organisms? We're getting into that today. So you may be familiar with the idea of mutations through movies or books, often, Superheroes gain powers from their mutations or a horrible disease occurs because of a mutation. So how do mutations affect real life organisms? Most mutations have no effect on an organism's survival. Okay, they are considered neutral. Sometimes the mutation does not change the organism's traits. Other times the new trait caused by the mutation has no effect on the organism's survival. For example, if a red flowering rose bush developed a mutation that caused one of its flowers to be slightly pinker, this would be a neutral mutation. As long as the insects that pollinate the plant are still attracted to the pink flower, the mutation has not affected the survival of the plant. Neutral mutations occur in animals too. If a mutation causes a small change in the structure of a protein that breaks down sugar, that protein may function just as well as the unchanged protein. Some mutations are harmful to an organism. They make it more difficult for the organism to survive or reproduce. They may even cause disease or death. A mutation in humans causes cystic fibrosis, a genetic disorder. This rare mutation changes the structure of a protein that carries salt across the cell membrane. The new protein doesn't function and, a salt, and salt accumulates in cells. This results in the buildup of thick mucus in the lungs. The mucus makes it hard to breathe. Harmful mutations occur in plants as well as animals. For example, the mutation that causes a rose bush to have white flowers instead of red will be harmful if insects can no longer find the pollen in the flower. This plant would not be able to reproduce effectively. A very small number of mutations are beneficial. Beneficial mutations help an individual survive in its environment. A mutation among certain people who live in the Himalayan mountains of Tibet is beneficial at high altitudes where oxygen is scarce. Nearly all humans visiting or living in high altitude places produce extra red blood cells to carry oxygen. Although the extra cells deliver more needed oxygen to the tissues, they make the blood thicker. Thick blood can be harmful. Most Tibetan people have a mutation that makes their red blood cells more efficient at carrying oxygen. These people do not have to make more red blood cells. Their blood doesn't get thick, but they can survive in their high altitude environment. How cool is that? So let's check for understanding here. Match each image with its description. So we want to see one of the three. Which one would be considered a neutral mutation? Which one is a beneficial mutation? Which one's a harmful mutation? You may want to look at these a little more up close. What do you think about this? What's going on here? Mm -hmm. What about this one? What about this one? 
All right, make your decision which one's neutral, which one's beneficial, which one's harmful to the organism. All right. All right, let's think about it. So maybe, hmm, let's place this one where? Here? No? About here. Think it would be beneficial? No? No? If you had, no? Extra, no? Okay. What about there? Bring it to harmful, maybe. All right, let's try the last two. Hmm. This looks pretty, uh, looks so good. Oh, my goodness. All right, let's check and see. Does this make sense? Ah, no. We need to do a switch here. Really? All right. Bring it back. Take a look. Is that right? Yeah. Go figure. All right, so this will be considered a neutral mutation. This is beneficial, okay? And this will actually be considered harmful. All right, so you need to know the three. So number one, you should have this one easy. What are three ways a mutation can affect an organism's survival in its environment? Number one, a mutation can be one of the three. Beneficial, harmful, or neutral to an organism's survival in its environment. All right? So not all mutations are a bad thing. Here we go. For the following images, decide if and then explain why the mutation described is harmful, neutral, or beneficial. Mutations resulted in some of this redwood tree's needles lacking chlorophyll. You think that's neutral, beneficial, or harmful? Hmm. Let's see. This mutation is harmful because the plant needs food to survive and plants use chlorophyll to make their own food using energy from the sun. Okay, how about this? Mutations resulted in this woodpecker having a very sharp beak that can pierce through the wood on a tree trunk. Neutral mutation, beneficial mutation, or harmful mutation. What do you think? This one is beneficial because the woodpecker uses its sharp beak to get food. Its ability to pierce through the wood helps the woodpecker to survive. Okay? Oh, and now we get to see the beautiful cat again. Mutations resulted in this cat having one blue eye and one green eye. What do you think about that one? Neutral mutation, beneficial muta mutation, or harmful mutation. All right, let's see. This mutation is neutral because the cat can still see. The change in color does not help or hurt its ability to survive. Okay, so explain how the same mutation in different organisms can be both beneficial and harmful. So you want to think about different organisms. Okay. So the same mutation in different organisms can be both beneficial and harmful if it increases the likelihood that one organism survives in this environment, but decreases the likelihood that the other organism will survive in its environment. For example, thick white fur could help a rabbit living in the snow, but would be harmful to a rabbit living in the desert. Okay, so that's just an example. So I believe we can answer our essential question. How do mutations affect real life organisms? Most mutations have no effect on an organism's survival and are considered neutral. 
Some mutations are harmful to an organism and make it more difficult for the organism to survive or reproduce. A very small number of mutations are beneficial and help an individual survive in its environment. All right. That is our wrap up for today. Let's close up with our outro. Here we go. Are you ready? Because I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Let's go. Here we go. It's been fun. It's been real. We break it down and pick up science skills. Give yourself two claps just for tuning in. Come back to me tomorrow. We can learn again. Oh, it's been fun. It's been real. We break it down and pick up science skills. Give yourself two claps just for tuning in. Come back to me tomorrow. We can learn again. Have an outstanding weekend. I will see you all next week. Peace.